What's up guys and welcome back to the Drift Games YouTube channel. Thanks for joining us today, hope everybody's doing good. Today is a special day because we have got Josh's Lil MX-5 back in the workshop. It's been mapped, it's been tuned, it's been fabricated. It now is a fully working drift car. If you're not familiar with the car, well here's a little small fast forward of what we did. We stole his car, we transformed it and we surprised him. Check it out. So then we got the car back, we brought it down to Vital Fabrication at Motorsport 56 who did the wiring, who did all that kind of stuff. So here's a little catch up of what went on down in Motorsport 56 and Vital Fabrication. Oh, it looks like a proper race car here. So the car is back now at Drift Games HQ. We're gonna have a first look at it today. Josh is coming down in a little while. He hasn't seen the car since it's kind of been torn apart, so I'm excited to see his reaction. We want to see how it sounds, we want to check out all the cool stuff that Vital Fabrication and Motorsport 56 and Track Day Performance have done. This car is a little beast right now, and I can't wait to see his reaction when he comes down. But if you're needing a reminder of what this car looks like, check this out. Every time it cuts out now, I'm going to be panicking and think it's going to blow up. Okay, so we've got the car back. Josh, it's been, how long since it's been gone? Two, three months. Two, three months. So a lot has been done. So we're going to walk through everything that's been done. But the most important thing that was done is now it's running. It's now mapped. Yes. That's so when I got it back last time, it wasn't at all. Exactly. So it wasn't Mike mapped. Mike broke it. He blew it up, I think. I think I just... I reckon he did a whole of a burnout. A whole of a burnout. <laughs> a whole of a burnout. <laughs> and he blew it up. I wish he did. No, we didn't. So the car is back, it is mapped. Now we couldn't go to track day performance when it was being mapped because obviously no. social distancing and everything else. So the car, you have no idea what power it's on. No idea. So what we're gonna do is shoot over to Robbie at track day performance back in time and we're gonna be able to see what exactly went down on the dyno. You ready? Well, I'm gonna be seeing this now. So when this video comes back, I'm gonna know. Yes, so when you come back, you'll know. <laughs> Hi, I'm Robbie from TDP.ie and welcome to our dyno room. Today we have the Drift Games uh, MX-5, which is just a 1.6 engine uh, MX-5 Series 1, and uh, well, they've slapped a big turbo on it. It's got a Walton Motorsport fab exhaust manifold, and on my advice, Josh went and got a Disco Potato or a GT2860RS, because they work pretty well on these little 1.6 mast engines. So it's a totally bond stock engine. We've got a Link ECU controlling it, and now uh, we're going to see what it makes. G4X Monsoon, which is a great little ECU now, and um, yeah, quite surprised with the results after quite a lot of time 
uh, playing with the ignition timing obviously because we have a normally aspirated engine which is limited by uh, the compression ratio so when you put boost into it it really it doesn't like it much. By, by playing with that and choosing different air fuel ratios we managed to get about 260 pounds of torque and 307 was our best horsepower but realistically speaking it's probably a genuine 300 horsepower uh, flywheel engine um, in use even with heat soak and all that sort of stuff going on so yeah, I'm quite happy with it. Don't know how long it will last. I don't know uh, the yeah prior history of this engine, but we have done these 1.6s before, and they're a tough little engine. Um, it fails. It probably won't be anything to do with the power going through. It'll just be the fact that it's already got too much mileage on it. So hopefully it'll keep going for Josh for a while, and they'll uh, be able to have some fun with it. So as we're filming this, Josh, you haven't seen the footage from Robbie's right now. Future Josh knows because he's just. Watch through all of Robbie's stuff. Yeah, but present Josh doesn't Pre know about present stuff. Josh right now. Okay, know. so I can still play the game of you don't know and I do know. Yeah, I know. Well, you've been playing all and day knows. and yesterday. Okay, so Josh, answer the question. What do you think it? Sh what What did you want it to make? At least two. I'm not gonna be disappointed. I would say at least two fifty. I wanted it around two fifty. Around two fifty horsepower. And if it was anything more or less, I would kind of be okay with. I I, I don't know. Okay, so. I know the power figure it did. Now, it did it safely, 100%, no issues. It was actually, Robbie said, the dyno went very smoothly. So that's a credit to the guys in Motorsport 56 and Vital Fabrication. Everything worked. And he said it was a very smooth mapping session. And his final figure was, guess? 243. Keep going. 250. Keep going. 255? Lower. Keep going. 260? Keep going. 265? Keep going. 270? Keep Some going. Some bigger than fives here, maybe quicker. Well, I don't want to... 280? Keep going. Shut up, 280. Keep going. 290? Keep going. Don't say 300. It did 300 horsepower. 300! 300 horsepower from a 1.6 MX-5. 301 or 2, I think. Yeah, something like that. See, I wasn't too sure, then I was like, are you, I, because you were messing around with figures all day and everything. And I wasn't too 300 sure. and one or two horsepower is what it did in the end. In a very Seriously? Light shed. Yeah, on a very, very uh, accurate dyno, too. And here's the more interesting thing your car has now a better power to rate ratio than my drift car. So there you well, go. What's your drift car? 450. It's 425. 425, and this probably weighs 300 kilos probably, less. Probably 300 kilos less, I'd say, in this thing. That's probably the next thing we want to do with actually. Weight. So we know it does 302 horsepower. That's we, also, ridiculous we also know now. that it does absolutely monstrous four foot flames out the front of the car, <laughs> which is going to melt everything around it. So we have to figure that out one day. It does look cool though. Let's talk us through what's happened with the car, Josh. You know a little bit more than everybody else. So talk we us through. We kind of somewhat know everything that's kind of. So gone. we've obviously done the Link ECU, all the sensors, everything like that. We've get, tidied everything up. We've got a massive amount of uh, wiring. Mike, do you know what? Go get the wiring that came out of this car because it is actually disgraceful okay. how many much wiring came out of this car. So you now have everything working. It's very tidy underneath. Yeah, like um, I kind of bought the whole package of the engine and it was kind of a homemade job. It bodged pretty much over. So like this pipe, there was kind of like, it was almost like right angle. So um, Ryan's actually made all the boost pipes and stuff and curved them all around there. The exhaust, the down pipe was terrible before. So we decided to put a bonnet exit along with, it's a teal wastegate. So that's obviously up the top as well. But it looks all right. So Mike has arrived in. So as you can see, everything is very tidy in here. All the wiring, everything, just what it needs to be. This is what came out of the car. Look at this spaghetti junction of disaster. nonsense. I like the weight of it as well. Like it's a good bit of weight. And you can, see in the, you can see in the previous video when Bob's doing it, it's on the bench. And the amount gone into it is barely anything. Like it, well, like, as he said, every wire is only as long as it needs to be. And it's only necessary wires where that's... It looks like that car. came out of a limousine or something. Right, See, so let's get back to the car, the nice stuff. We've got the... What are the, the plugs as well? So these are, are these off an RA? Yes. So I've got supercar plugs. Supercar coil packs. Coil packs, not plugs. Not plugs. The plugs coil are in, in, attached to them. They know that much. But the, the coil packs, they're RA, so they're very go-to for drifters. Yeah. They're very reliable. It's not been fancy labelled, so like, you know everything that's going on. Yeah, it's got all, all the... the ignition it's one. It's too fancy two. for you is the problem that I have with this car. Well, I don't think it was... Built for me to work baby on. filter as well. Super tidy. We've kind of gone through this in some of the last vlogs. If you guys want to go back and watch them, we have gone through quite a bit of the wiring. It's kind of, year. yeah. So the setup's obviously the same, but it's obviously it's been permanently fixed. And then a few of the more rough jobs have been 
tightened up and remade and everything like that. Looks super clean. The guys did an awesome job. I love these exhausts. They're just that's even like a heat it. shield behind. Or the <laughs> it has, sure it has a heat shield, but it's it, it's under pressure. It's doing its job anyway as a heat shield. But yeah. We'll, uh, once you see the dino videos, you'll know all about that. Well, technically, future Josh will have seen future them Future Josh will know. And the audience will have already seen them as well, but I still haven't seen them. Let's remind ourselves of the flames. Okay, so let's go into the inside. This is one of my favorite parts of the car, Josh, is how tidy it is on the inside now, because... Well, should we take the roof off so we can get light and see it? Yes, let's take the roof off. With the roof coming off, which is a pretty cool feature of this it's, car. If it's any what dry, this is how it's going to be. So this is, oh, let me close the door. So this is what you're going to be driving around like. You know what, I think the good thing here is that if you're driving around on the track, we get a really clear picture of your stupid face as it comes by. Well, you know this, it? Yeah, you need to see a stupid smile coming by. Hello, guys. Hey, I'm, waiting I'm, up at the top. I'm a real drifter. <laughs> It'd be like a roller coaster with no hands. <laughs> yeah. I, I get too into that. So let's have a look on the inside, Josh. See, this is the main thing. So because of the cage, obviously, and the roof naturally goes that way, so the cage is obviously below the roof. Right, let me get a better shot of that. Is that a better shot? Yeah. So, so, the cage is a little tight, it was a little tight. It's a small car as it is, and obviously now it's a bit smaller, and I couldn't really fit in it properly without hitting my head on the roll cage. So, what well, sounded like a simple job, so I was re researching it and everything like that. On the American one, you just buy this tray and you weld it in underneath. But on the UK one, obviously, it's right-hand drive, and underneath for the seat, seat rails and everything like that, well, is the um, chassis rail and all the brake lines and the fuel lines and everything like that. So to cut the seat, you've obviously got to make the tray and then you've got to move all of the brake lines and the fuel lines. So what I thought was a simple job, which What's that? every time I go to someone and say, I just need this done, just like cut a hole, weld something in, it was not a simple job at all. So there was like days of work gone into this? These days and days of work. And this is just so you can fit in the car. Well, let's, let's see. Well, this is my moment of truth. Can yeah, I fit in you the haven't, car? Yeah, because you haven't actually sat in this car since they've, they've changed the floor. No. We want to take a minute just to thank one of our partners here at Drift Games, M-Tech Brakes. They're one of the UK's leading supplier of performance brake pads, discs, and hoses. We have run them on all of our cars. They're an amazing product and at an amazing price. So make sure you check out their full range at mtechbrakes.com. So yeah, I can see the floor there now. A lot of work gone into that to make sure that the seat sits as low as possible in the car. As I see, you want your hips protected by the cage. And I think there's actually more underneath, where we'll have a look underneath in a bit. Yeah, because there's, um, it's like a right angle, right, right angle down, that he's had to kind of weld a plate so that if I hit a bump, it wouldn't just rip all the floor down. He's kind of like smoothed it in sort of thing. Ah, so and this is all within the regulations because obviously it's safer to be not having your head sticking out the top of the car than anything else, so that's not too bad. But when you go on your roof, your head's through here now, it might be a Well, they say you're not allowed to cut the floor out, but it's technically not cut out. It's cutting a section of the floor out. So I've not really replaced it for any advantage whatsoever. Yeah. Only the advantage of me being able to fit in the car. Which, which, which is always an advantage. Which has, <laughs> so, so safety is much more an advantage of that. It's not for Right, well, sit in it. Let's see how you, how you, we haven't seen you in the car since we tested this. So let's hope that all that work was worth it. I've had a bit of an up from the power now, and this could be just. Yes. Let's hope this works. Let's hope you can clear in. Let's see. Oh, that's yes. all good. Yes. That is good. That feels much better. It's like you're sitting pretty low in it and you've got loads of clearance to the top of the cage. See, it feels ridiculous that I'm literally sat an inch or so closer to the floor that was already a few inches off. The floor. Yeah, you are sitting on the floor. This is not a, if you were in a speed bump, it might throw you out of the car. <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. If I hit the grass or something like that. It's going to be a fun ride. Do you know what though? It definitely clears, which is perfect. Perfect. Absolutely. Go move Look at that. Perfect. Let me yeah, see. You're going to hit that. that. We'll, put, we'll put something on that. We'll put some piping on that, but it doesn't hit there. No. No. And if it's below there. Fine. So all you got to do is put some padding. So like, you're obviously going to, you might touch off it, but it shouldn't do any damage. And, and it's a lot it. better than it was. Just revealed my quarantine hair as well. Quarantine hair. The hairdresser still haven't opened. <laughs> it's no joke, guys. Quarantine it's hair. No joke. There's a lot going on under these hats. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, the only annoying thing from this is obviously I got sprayed, and this is probably what Mike's most annoyed about. Are you gonna make Mike spray it again? What? That's harsh. Going no, sure. As you see, it's like, only a said to Ryan. It's just a small. Well, just a little bit there, and it'll be fine, like because it's as easy as. That's that. what I told Ryan. He was like, "Oh, yeah, it is a small bit." 
And but you just yeah. go and make a documentary where you get the clips and put it together and it's as good as uh, Smoke and Mirrors. It's, yeah, it's, it's what happens. It's easy as that, isn't that, it? That's what you do. <laughs> the work is all... The, sure, work always happens on a time lapse, so it's very quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> time lapse work. <laughs> easy. What so let's, let's talk through the interior, Josh. Let's have a look at all the switch panels and stuff. Yes. Yeah, so show me what's going on in here. I still need a wheel, I think, to come off. Yeah. You need, uh, you'll definitely need a wheel, to, uh, you'll need a, a boss quick release. quick release there because it is knee hit the steering wheel central. I think a dish steering wheel might be a bad shout too. Maybe. We've just got, just, we've, just we've, for, we've uh, how are your knees on the clutch and stuff? Like it is a tiny bit maybe. Yeah, maybe just a little bit of dish would, would go a long way. So show us that this is a fancy switch panel now. And See, I don't really know this, I don't really know what well, there's only do. six buttons so it's not too So hard. I reckon that's ignition on. No. Actually, Josh, I've got a, no, I've got a, yeah. I've got a bit of a surprise for you. Right? <laughs> I've got, a, I've got. A, don't look so worried. Why are you looking so worried? <laughs> because you're smirking. So obviously, I'm going to be worried. <laughs> so basically, you know the way, like I, I decided that I was going to, um, that I was going to build a car for you, and yeah. you were allowed to go drifting, right? Yeah. But there's a difference. There's one thing we didn't actually think about in that, and that's because when now it goes to the tuner or it goes anywhere, they're asking me what I want done with the car because you're not paying for it. So I have full capability of doing whatever I want with the car. So I actually put some extra features in this car for you. What? We'll turn on the ignition and you'll see. I don't know how to turn on the ignition. Start the car. You have to press, the, first of all, the red, button is, the red button is the kill switch. Put it like in one of these, it's not got a fire extinguisher. No, it's no. not, no. So that's, that's, now your power's on, which is pretty sweet. You've got a. Now your ignition switch is up, yeah. Now press the start button. Now Dave! <laughs> That's the same picture as... <laughs> Revenge I, is a motherfucker, Josh Holdsworth. <laughs> <laughs> I put this picture on his desktop. How long has it been on? Like Four five? years it's been on my desktop. And I said, and someone said, do you want to put some branding or something on it when you turn the car on? I said, you know what? I have the perfect picture to put on that car every time we start it. And you know what's even more beautiful? It's locked on there, so you can't change it. So that's what you're gonna have to look at for every time. So every time I switch on the car, I've got that. Yeah. This, is your, this is your new uh, dash heads up display. So that is going to be sitting at you when you're nervous in qualifying, looking at you the whole time. And hopefully, you know what, my, my, I'm going to be open about it. I think it's going to relax you. I think it's going to make you laugh and go, it's not so bad. Look, I could be this guy in he's his speedos. He's, he's literally, he's eyeballing me right now. He's looking straight at you saying... You've got to reshoot it just for you. Like. <laughs> yeah, so you, right, you've got kill switch on and then you've got ignition on. Oh, it's, it's gone off, so it only yeah. takes how long about... It's minutes. only 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it only stays on for 20 minutes. It stays on for about uh, two or three minutes and then it so goes to the actual heads up. So then you go to your, yeah, your start button and then you can start it up. Wow. <laughs> Have we broken it already? She's, just, she's been on for ages, she's crying. Turn off the ignition again. It's just the power has been on for so long. Yeah. There, Turn know? on the, and then press yeah. the button. Give it a sec. Your fuel pump on. It should come on anyway, I don't think it, it's on a switch. There you oh, go. I broke it already. So, when I turn it on, I've just got this. So when you turn it on, you've got that. It's gonna... And then, it turns to the link display. It's still a man in speedos. <laughs> I don't turn it off. Red switch down. Red switch down. Red switch down. Oh, I've always wanted button. to do that. There you go. That's very fancy. It's very fancy. It's fancy in a mic car. If you don't press that red button, it will go dead. Okay. So I'll tell you what we'll do. Because we can't see a lot of the stuff that's gone on underneath the car, why don't we throw it over the pit and have a look at all the fabrication from the other side. We'll have to push this easier. Yes. Okay, Josh, we're underneath the MX-5 now. You can show us some of the nice little details that have been done. Well, this is the first time I'm kind of seeing them, so... Watch your head. I know. I'm, I'm half sideways now. Yeah. Not sure if this like light's doing much. much. <laughs> hey. Right, so, so the bumper bar, you can't see all of it, so it does come out there. So obviously it supports the front of the bumper. But then it's like the jacking point is a separate part altogether. Yeah, so it's like middle. split into two bits, which I'm sure was done for a reason and it's quite yeah. tidy. So it's I'm quite handy to have too. I'm not too sure I'm gonna jack it from the front. Since I'm not sure I can fit a jack under here, but it has one anyways. Well it has one and also <laughs> I think it's more for maybe protection from you crashing into things too. So Well it would protect the intercooler there, won't it? Yeah, so that's pretty tasty. And uh, we've got a little bit of an oil leak but we can sort that out another day. But there's something coming from somewhere, I'm not fully sure what that is. Yeah, it's, I think it looks like... And this is the first time I've been properly under this car. And you know what? It's not bad. I was expecting worse to be honest. Considering you left this car 
under a tree at your mum's house for three years. I expected this and to be. And this was a road car, never been under sealed, and I've had this car what eight years ish now. And it's eight not years. bad. Like it's it's got a little bit of surface. You can tell it was low on the road. <laughs> like, yeah, you can tell it was low because it's got a couple of scuffs, but it's not like it's rusted or anything. It's like majorly a problem. Well, it was imported from Japan in two thousand. Early 2000, I think. Okay, so it, it did have most of its life in Japan. Yeah, so people know that Japanese cars. This are is the bit we wanted. To, this is the one we wanted to see underneath is the the floor. So how this was done. So this is a very tasty, tasty job for something that's very awkward because this isn't something. Well, you if you can look on this side, and you can see on that side is the chassis rail is completely under the floor. Yeah. So. I'm not sure what, he's kind of like half, he's left a tiny bit of the chassis rail so it kind of lays on top of there. So the chassis rail is kind of still there, but then obviously it just makes it a harder job. Yeah. And then also running on this side, so if it was an American one, there's nothing under here. So it's a much easier job. But whereas you can see the lines here, they're about to be relocated up there is they ran along the side of the chassis rail. I see what you so, mean. And the thing is, you're also going to have to throw a bit of paint on this as well now, because that will rust underneath the exposed Mike, metal now. Mike loves painting. Mike he was only telling me he was mad and for it. I love this. Other than that, it's pretty much standard MX-5 from here on out, isn't it? Ish. Well, I've got, obviously, coilovers, and then... So there was, when I dropped it, quite a lot of camber, and they're not really adjustable camber, camber arms. So I got some upper arms there to push the wheels back out, ah, so they kind of rip. reset it to zero. Yeah, because if it's a competition car, you do want a bit of grip in it. Well, yeah, it's mostly for tyres at practice days, because I'd be going through a set of tyres in, like, a few laps, but it was only literally that part of the tyre, then that bit would almost be, like, completely new. So now they're sitting pretty square on the back. So, yeah, so they... Well, you can kind of tell. I'm not too sure. And I know people are going to ask this, Josh. You're running a standard MX-5 differential in this. A lot of people upgrade that. Yeah, I think you can... They, it is split somewhere. I'm not too... Actually, it seems like there's some sort of bolts missing from there. They're, yeah. not, they're, not, they're not in that side. It needs a good once-over, to be it's, honest. It's not a car that got a lot of love. So now it has a lot of love in the mechanical and power I think it's the area. diff mount somewhere. So the diff mount's there. There needs to be something welded to reinforce them. So I reckon that'd be a job before it goes properly on track, I would say. But, you know, not too much to do down here. Well, it's taken absolute death for, what? How long's it been a track car? About three years? Yeah, and never really got cleaned. So or... I've never done a gearbox, a diff, a shaft, all the stuff that you broke. Yeah, but you're running about 60 horsepower. That's the difference. Not anymore. No, you're not anymore. <laughs> so I think the rest so of... any, everything could break now. Now you got power, you got stuff that's going to break. So let's hope we can get all that tidied up before yeah. we get a track. But yeah, it looks pretty clean under here. And again, tidying up to do. Yeah, the only other thing I've got is the um, destroyer die arms. So this is the kind of the equivalent to Wise Fab for MX-5s. Yes. So you can see there, you got the hubs. So they're, they're not like chopped knuckles or anything. So they're actually like redesigned hubs. Yeah, so, so they're not to go with these arms as well that obviously give a lot more clearance. And it has good lock, this car, very good lock. It's, it's, an, it's enough. Like it's enough. you can put rack spaces in and stuff like that to give it more, but I kind of think if you're doing any more then you're kind of spinning. Yeah, for sure. Well, let's get out of this uh, pit and let's have a little chat about what the next stage for this car is. Yeah. All right, Josh, so the car now runs. It's got 300 horsepower. We saw it on the dyno. It's looking good. The next step for the car is? I would say a new set of wheels. So there's a new set of wheels that are going all around. So I'm not just gonna have four. At practice days, I should be able to have tires stacked up. Don't believe, don't believe it till I see it. <laughs> so instead of blocking up the way by just jacking up the car and leaving it. <laughs> yeah, you're a disaster for that in our garage, always block, blocking the way in. But you got some wheels, new wheels. These wheels are nice, but you got some nicer wheels. Well, they've been under the car since it was, wasn't even turbo. They're about two years old now, so it kind of needs a bit of a fresher look. So, we shall reveal We've got new wheels. We're going to do splitters, canards, underskirts. Yeah, so I did have a, um, a splitter on this, but it kind of just got absolutely demolished. So, so we're going to do a new splitter, new canards. Yeah. And one we're going to try and design the canards. I yeah, think. one important thing because the car sort of went from a road car to a track car very quickly is now it needs all the safety stuff. So plumbed in fire extinguisher, it needs boot catches, bonnet catches. That's uh, about it. The, the, like, it's got a kill switch and everything like yeah. that now. So just needs the fire suppression much. system. And it just needs a bit of um, paint just because it's all exposed metal and stuff there. And then. Then we go to track. We should be able to drive it. Wow. See what it does. Could be unbelievable. Could, be, Could unbelievable. be faster than yours. We drag race that mine and yours. 
Faster than mine, he says. Well, guys, if you enjoyed the video, let us know in the comments. Did you like how the car turned out? Did you think it'll do 300? Do you think it's going to blow up within 20 minutes? Let us know in the comments. Josh thinks it's going to be perfectly reliable. I think it might blow up. It might break shafts. It might break gearboxes. But who knows? We're going to test it out soon. The next time we'll see this car, we're going to do all the cosmetics to it and the safety stuff. Give it a spanner check and get it ready for the track. If you've enjoyed the video, let us know in the comments. Hit the subscribe button. Turn the notification bell on. And we'll see you on the next episode of the Drift Games Vlog. See you later, guys. Thank you.